Hi, Kelly. Hi. Thanks for coming on. I, I want to talk. start by going back to your childhood, those days of drama with your dad. Yeah. So you guys used to play a game together? Yeah. Well, well my dad would, um, my dad would, we would both draw and we'd both sort of start, he would start the story with one sentence and then I would draw a picture that represented that start and then I would tell the, re the second piece and he would draw and we would sort of create these sort of books together that just had this sort of comic strip of these drawings that told the story. And you know, we both probably didn't draw that well in those days, but it was fun and it taught me, you know, how to make up stories and draw pictures to represent them from a really early age. And I'll always think that that was really kind of the root of of where my sort of passion for that came from. When you think back to the first animated film you saw, obviously I think the first animated film you see is when you're you can't remember these things, you know, when you're one yeah, or two. Yeah, I do. Though. But you, <laughs> oh, you remember what? What was the first animated? The film first you time saw? I went to a theater and saw an animated film was when I was probably about seven. It was the Jefferson Theater in Beaumont, Texas, where I grew up, and uh, it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now you got to remember that was like 1967. In those days, you had to wait years for to see these movies. We didn't have DVDs or any of the stuff we have now. We certainly didn't have Netflix. And so we would, we had to wait, so Snow White was coming. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what, I wanna go see it. So my brother and I went to a matinee, and I remember watching it and seeing it on screen, and I just turned to my brother and said, someday I'm gonna learn how to do that. You knew then that this is something you wanted to oh, do. Oh yeah, I was on that trajectory pretty much from that point forward. I love the story that you end up writing to a, a guy at Disney, the yeah. guy who worked on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and 101 Dalmatians. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. What, what, what did he, who's this guy, Ken well, Anderson? Ken Anderson was um, an art director dating all the way back. He, he really was one of Walt Disney's right-hand men and in terms of design and, uh, and just ideas. And I was an admirer of his work from books I'd seen. And I wrote him a letter. And uh, how old were you uh, when I wrote that letter the first time? I was probably about fifteen. That's pretty pretty ambitious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the time, you know, I thought I might as well have been writing to the president. <laughs> you know, I was a complete <laughs> Disney nerd at that point. And uh, he forwarded the letter to a guy named Don Duckwall, if you can believe it or not. Donald who, Duckwall. Yeah, his name was Donald Duckwall, and he was <laughs> he was a production manager at Disney. For years and years. Yeah. And I never met him in person, but I got this letter back and I thought, you know, they're joking with me now. They're, what is that? You know, and I realized, no, he's a real guy. And he told me about <laughs> he told me about <laughs> California Institute of the Arts and yeah. told me how to how to get a job and if you want to do it, you gotta learn. You gotta go to school for it. And uh, that's what I did. And that was a long time ago now. That's incredible. I want to play a clip from the first movie you got screen fed, uh, credit for. This is Disney's The Black Cauldron. Oh, yes. I've never seen The Black Cauldron. For far as I can tell, it's not exactly Snow White. So the, what you're about to hear, this is when the Horned King uses the cauldron to raise the dead, and his cauldron-born army begins to pour out yes. into the world. <laughs> Soon the black cauldron will be mine. Its evil power will course through my veins. From the 1985 animated Disney film, The Black Cauldron, where the Horned King raises his dead army out of the cauldron, that was the first screen credit for my guest, Kelly Asbury, director of Smurfs the Lost Village. So I understand it was, it was some kind of bet you made in high school with a friend? Um... Disney put out in Life magazine somewhere around 1977 or 78, there was a Life magazine article about upcoming films from Disney. And it said that The Black Cauldron would be released somewhere in like 1984, 85. And I said to a person, this, this friend next to me, I said, you know what? I'm going to work on that movie. You watch. And I ended up doing it sort of sort of by happenstance. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, I was working um, I was working at another company, and a friend of mine had gotten a job at Disney. It was right after I got out of school. And he called me one day and said, hey, they need, they need an in-between artist over here. And I gave your name, and they need him now. And can you just, you know, can you send your portfolio? So it was just this timing thing where I got in there, and I worked on that movie. It was my first actual animated feature. You must have been so excited. I, I was beside myself. I couldn't believe it. And then to see my name on screen that first time was, I actually thought, wow, you know, I, 
I'm on the I'm on the path I wanted to be on. We could we could talk forever. I mean, I, I want to fast forward a little bit. We could mm-hmm. spend the next three hours talking about the films <laughs> you made. I want to talk a little bit about the Nightmare Before Christmas. I oh, want to yeah. talk about Tim Burton. Yeah. You got to work with him on that. It's considered to be one of the most groundbreaking animated films of all time. Tell me a little bit about working on that film. Well, you know, the thing is, I I wish I could say that I did work a lot with Tim. I worked with Henry Selleck, who directed it. Mm -hmm. Tim Burton had developed that story and done all kinds of drawings years before it actually got made. And Tim had actually gone to school with Henry Selleck and asked Henry to direct the film. Mm -hmm. Henry is a master of stop motion. He did James and the Giant Peach. Uh, He did Caroline a couple of years back. Um, He's just great. And so... It was really Henry that I worked the most with. Now, we were influenced by Tim, and Tim came through here and there, and I met him, but mm. I, I can't— A dark, dark cloud surrounding <laughs> yeah, him wherever yes, he walks. Yeah. He was always raining. <laughs> yes, and yeah. he was always kind of walking across, you know, the— tr- he always kept toward the walls. Oh my! Lord. He really did. It was I don't terrifying. know if that was. Yeah, but he he was he was nice enough. But um, never really got to know Tim. It always disappoints people a little bit because they want to hear all about Tim Burton, and I simply just don't know the guy very well. No, but I think what I'm <laughs> what I'm really asking about is that this is considered to be one of the greatest animated films, and at least a very groundbreaking animated film. Oh yeah, first animated film uh, to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. Yep. And uh, you also worked on Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Uh, which was the first. Uh, First animated film to be nominated for, for best, best picture. For best picture, yeah. I know that animated films sometimes suffer from a lack of recognition. What what did that recognition mean to you? It, it was as much about the teamwork that went into making it. I had worked on the story team, and I had done some visual development for that picture. My good friends Kirk Weiss and Gary Trousdale were the directors. It was their directing debut. We all were in the same peer group coming out of Cal Arts, and so. It was meaningful on so many levels, all those that I just named, because it felt like, wow, we actually are entering into a world where adults are kind of re-embracing animation the way they used to before television. Television kind of turned animation into a bit of a babysitter, I think. Okay. Saturday morning TV. Prior to television in the 40s and early 50s, People, everyone went to animated features, and they weren't just a children's medium. But that that sort of happened, and then I think Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid and certainly Lion King mm. suddenly brought adults into the theater um, to see movies. So it was to see animated movies. So it was it was certainly a great time to be coming up in the business for that. That's so interesting. The idea that it, it became a bit of a babysitter for for some folks, and yeah. and, and instead of an, a really artistic experience, you know, one of those great artistic experiences, and I think this hit me at just the right time was was Toy Story, mm. the first full feature length computer animated film. I know you worked on that. Yeah. Let's take a listen to when we first meet Buzz Lightyear when he lands in Andy's room. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Star Command, come in. Do you read me? Why don't they answer? <gasps> My ship! Blast. This will take weeks to repair. <laughs> that is a clip Such from 1995, a, Toy a great, Story, such a great movie. where we first meet action figure Buzz Lightyear. I was, I, you were smiling during that one. Well, it's just fond memories. I mean, I worked on Toy Story in, in sort of its um, midpoint of story development. I was only there... Maybe a little under a year. Um, I was between pictures at the time, and I was. It was between Nightmare Before Christmas and James and the Giant Peach. Right. Uh, there was a little. I, I was living in the northern Northern California. Mm-hmm. Uh, San Francisco is where those movies were made, and uh, my friend Joe Ramph, the late great Joe Ramph, story artist for Disney, um, he was working with John Lasseter and said, "Look." We, we need your talent. Come over here. So I said, okay, sure. And you got brought in as a story artist. A story artist. Yeah. Uh, forgive me. What does a story artist do on an animated film? A story artist sort of with the script as a jump off point, you're given maybe a sequence or you know three pages of script, and you interpret that script in drawing form like oh, a comic okay. strip. And that? then you add gags and you pitch it and things get added to it. But it's sort of the – it's the visual writing of the movie, and it really becomes – the blueprint for the film is the storyboard that's made into a story reel. And so you you make the movie completely in, in still pictures first. Ke- Kelly Asbury, yeah. anyone who has kids of a certain age has has watched Frozen probably dozens of times. Oh, yeah. I have I have never seen it. Uh, and I said this yesterday, and I had three parents in our office look at me and go, what? 
And I asked, <laughs> have you seen it dozens of times? And they said dozens of times. Did you know how big a hit Frozen was going to become? At the time I worked on it, um, it was it, my good, good friend Chris Buck directed it, and he invited me to do some story work. I had finished James and the Giant Peach, and I was like, sure, you know, again, I was between – that's what's great about – we all kind of help each other, you know, yeah, and yeah. so I, um, I went and I was working at Disney on that, and they were going through a lot of story changes and a lot of turmoil to try to figure out just how to, how to convey the story they wanted to tell. And to, to f it, it takes a while with these movies to find the story. You, you have to really dig. And we were in the middle of digging when I worked on it. And I went, I actually got asked to go work at Sony uh, when I was kind of finishing up on my time on Frozen. And I remember going, what are they going to do? I mean, it was really kind of, it was really kind of in trouble. You weren't sure if it was going to work. I just, I, I feared for all my cohorts that were working <laughs> on it because you know it's a tough. Th these movies are hard. Yeah. And you go through this time just like any production. You know, if you've ever been in a stage production, there's always some moment when everyone's just like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? <laughs> we're, this is this is going to be this is an absolute failure. And then for some reason, it comes together as it gets made, and all the people team up and and frozen when i when i finally saw the film i was aghast at how wonderful it is i mean i i was like how did they pull this off so quickly it really came together and i i i'm really proud to have had any part in it i had a very small part mm -hmm. but no, Frozen ended up being something special. There's no doubt. I'm going to end up uh, watching it this weekend, I think. Smurfs The Lost You're Village. You're going to see Smurf The Lost Village this weekend. First, right away. <laughs> right away. Uh, this is your fourth run at directing. Uh, and the yep. movie is, sticks truer to the original cartoon yep. than previous Smurfs adaptations. How much freedom did you have taking something, an iconic cartoon like the Smurfs, and, and rebooting it? Well, fortunately, I had a lot of freedom regarding the look, particularly. Um, I wanted the movie to really go back to the Peo comic books from the 50s and 60s, really. And uh, he had such a wonderful style of drawing. And it was actually, it was 2D and it was very bright and colorful and buoyant. And I wanted to convey that in a way that I don't think has ever quite been done. Um, and I luckily had Sony, Sony Pictures Animation and Sony Imageworks. The team of artists that work for those companies are just incredible. And we all got on board. We all kind of, once again, a director of an animated feature is only as good as the team behind him. And I had so many people just on my side trying to get this right. And Christine Belson, the president of the company, came in about two years ago. She really championed the project and, and trusted me quite a lot. And it was it was a great experience. So we, we mentioned Toy Story there and, and, and Beauty and the Beast and Nightmare Before Christmas. How do you the reason I bring these up is because how do you take these past experiences you have with some of the greatest films, much less animated films made, and, and channel them into this new Smurfs movie? Well, you know, it's all every, every movie has its own challenges. Every movie takes on its own personality when you're in the middle of working on it. Every team of people becomes like this big sort of family trying to work together. Um, to make something, and uh, they all, you learn something with each one, and you you fine tune your skills, hopefully. And with something like Smurfs, you know, I wanted to make sure that we did a movie that was appropriate to the subject matter. It's a Smurf movie, <laughs> you know. It's not. We, we didn't say, okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make Manchester by the Smurf. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make something really serious here. We're gonna make we're gonna make luck. Smurfy's choice. Yeah, you know we didn't want to do that. We wanted to do a movie that was. I I love the movie Goonies. Mm -hmm. I love The Wizard of Oz. I love Stand by Me. I love To Kill a Mockingbird. And all of those movies sort of came together. They're they're a group of kids going on an adventure together to accomplish something, and it's about teamwork and it's about f finding your strength and exploiting it. That's what the movie is. And and uh, I didn't. I didn't really target it for any particular audience, but there's no one that's going to ever say it's anything but a Smurf movie, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. I want that to be a good thing, and so I think I have to leave it to the viewers to see how they feel about it. I want to I want to ask this question before we let you go. Is you know you started out with the with the Black Cauldron, which is I would say a very traditional form of animation, yes. and and you know essentially drawing. You yes. Know? And now you're you're deep into this uh, computer animated style of drawing. Are you ever wistful for the old days of of, of old animation? Sure. I mean, I think that um, I think that they are the computer and the digital side of things is really just a new paintbrush for the artists. 
but it's it's taken a few things away. Original, most of the artwork is produced digitally. Almost all the storyboards are now done on a Cintiq tablet, you know, on a, on a drawing digital tablet. Yeah. And so it's taken away all that volumes of original artwork that we used to have that, uh. you know, um, that's going to eventually be something that is strictly owned by collectors. Um, and those are things that I think is a loss. Mm -hmm. But I also think that, you know, you're never going to find anything more rich than a hand-drawn image. Mm -hmm. and, and someone who's really, you know, the, the people like animator Glenn Keane or Mark Davis or these people who, these classic Disney artists, um, that that is something that I think uh, it will always be a great, beautiful art form. I hate to think that it's something that's dying away, but... You don't see that richness, at least in America, very much. You know, Japan still embraces 2D animation a lot. There's beautiful work coming out of Japan. Uh, so, you know, it'll always be there, but I think that more and more kids are just expecting everything to be digital. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, I don't know what's next. Virtual reality is going to change things. <laughs> Um, so you can live know. with the Smurfs uh, if you want. Yeah, I guess I guess that, that's next. <laughs> Kelly Asbury, it's been such a pleasure. Oh, it's really been a pleasure. Thank you.